The Seabrook firefighters have formed a truck committee to research and present the needs for replacement for our current ladder truck. Uh, the objectives that we're going to go over today um, are uh, inform public on the new reasons for the truck. Uh, there's various issues that we're going to touch on, um, kind of give a good justification for it. Uh, provide visual examples of the difference between our current ladder truck and the proposed new aerial platform truck. Uh, go over some safety issues and concerns that the department has uh, in relation to residents and, um, and structures in town. Uh, cover the costs to the town, uh, how much it's going to cost each taxpayer, um, how the town plans on paying for it, cover insurance breaks if there are any, <clears throat> and what the truck could possibly do to homeowners' um, insurance rates. And then again, like I said, uh, cover the taxes. Uh, the NFBA, the N National Fire Protection Agency, by definition is a trade association that maintains private copyrighted standards and codes for usage and adoption by local governments. Um, it really provides many different guidelines regarding safety for our firefighters and the residents that we serve. These are just a few of the uh, regulations that pertain to um, firefighter apparatus and specifically the aerial device and they go over uh, testing of the trucks, uh, the equipping of the trucks, also uh, when trucks are to be placed out of service, if at all, and certain uh, testing requirements that may change due to the age of the vehicle. Uh, this is a picture of our current ladder truck, which is actually a, a model. Uh, it's a 1993 LTI, and we refer to it as a Quint. Uh, a Quint refers to, the, among other things, to the fact that it's an aerial device that has a tank and a pump. Um, the ladder on this vehicle is actually 75 feet in length. And while I've heard many times, um, why do we need anything bigger than 75 feet? Uh, there's no buildings larger than 75 feet in town. Uh, it's not the, the height of the ladder that's the issue. It's the reach of the ladder, which we'll go over in more detail later. Current capabilities uh, and issues with our, our current truck. Um, <clears throat> any large apartment building fire we have in town, and even large box store buildings, uh, we require automatic mutual aid to successfully manage the situation, usually. If the situation is more than just an alarm activation or, or burnt food, then, then these other uh, neighboring towns are required. Amesbury Fire, Hampton Fire, Northampton Fire, they all provide larger ladder trucks um, to assist us <coughs> in any situation here. Uh, we also provide automatic mutual aid to every fire in Hampton with a ladder truck. So uh, it does get used quite a bit, uh, either in town or or providing out-of-town uh, assistance. I mentioned in the previous slide reach issues, uh, our current truck has inadequate rescue capability, meaning um, it's depending on where vehicles are parked, if there's snow banks, uh, setbacks of the buildings, the floor the fire is on, um, what's, what position or orientation the building is, can totally uh, affect our ability to rescue people from, from certain windows um, with our current ladder truck. And there, there is actually incidences in town where our truck will not reach uh, the building on certain situations. Right. Um, uh, rescue capability, our, our biggest issues really uh, are the garden style apartments we have around town. Uh, Cimarron, Windjammer, Pinecrest, uh, Governor Weir. Um, you have the driveway. To reach the building itself, you have to go over parked cars, over the green space, and then the building itself. Um, so at 75 feet in length, uh, our ladder is really inadequate for our needs today. Right, and then uh, when we talk about these parapet style shopping centers, what that is is a false wall <clears throat> on all these large box stores that are built in the front. And uh, when you look at, uh, let's just say Walmart, the top of what you see is not the roof. The roof is actually set down anywhere four to six feet from the top of that edge. Uh, so anytime you have to access the roof, um, you have to actually climb down onto the roof from the thing. And the new platform trucks have ladders that, that we can climb out of, or climb onto, climbing out of the actual box on the platform. Below grade and rope rescue uh, is another capability that we're not able to do as our ladder truck won't reach, it won't go all the way to the ground when you, when you lower it. Um, and it's not designed to hold a lot of weight off the tip of the ladder, whereas these aerial apparatus, 
that we're going for can actually reach the ground and it is designed to actually hold weight off the end. Uh, maintenance and upkeep costs. Currently, um, our ladder truck is 21 years old and there's um, recurring maintenance costs uh, that, that it goes through just to keep it in service. Um, it currently has non-functioning critical components that are on it, which limit its ability to perform to its full potential. Uh, and then <clears throat> required annual inspections, um, if they're not done, uh, the truck is, is technically out of service. Right. Now also, 22 years ago when they, when they purchased this vehicle, the ladder truck was fairly common. They, nowadays, really, you, you use them to access a height and get off and do your job and come back. It's never meant to be a work platform. Uh, the new designs, the new platform vehicles, you can work from it. You can stage tools, and uh, it's just it's the way to go nowadays. When it comes to operating off the ladder, as you can see in the picture, the firefighter is literally um, laying on the ladder itself uh, with feet on the rungs. Uh, those rungs are spaced pretty far apart, so you're, you're wide open, usually it will strap on. And then you operate a monitor, which is a, just a large nozzle, um, when providing uh, exposure protection, which is, in essence, you're spraying water in between a fire and a, a building that's not on fire to prevent the building from catching on fire from radiative heat. Um, it says 75 feet is inadequate reach for rescuing uh, apartment out of apartment buildings or um, shopping centers. Uh, I mentioned before, it does not extend to ground level. Um, when you do rescue somebody with a ladder truck, uh, you, if they get on the ladder, you must climb down the ladder one at a time and then go back up and then rescue one more person. Uh, and you cannot move around when, it's, when you're on the end of it. Uh, it's not a suitable work platform, obviously, as you can see from that picture. Um, I already mentioned maintenance and upkeep costs, and if you look, <coughs> the maximum flow from our current truck is 500 gallons a minute of water. Uh, the following three slides, actually, are uh, what you would see from uh, a third-story window. <coughs> this is actually uh, um, Dover's ladder, and uh, alongside it, as you'll see uh, further down, is their platform. But um, you know, day or night, if you're trapped, if you have fire behind you, you're trapped in a window and you look out, this is what you're going to see. Uh, just another angle, again, um, imagine climbing out on that in your pajamas and your slippers, uh, an elderly person, a child. Not to mention, there's also a firefighter in full gear, usually on the end of that ladder as well. So you both have to get on that. And just another view. It's a long way down, a lot of space in between safety. Uh, this is a, a paragraph taken out of uh, Firehouse Magazine. It's an actual event that happened. Uh, this is not um, an isolated incident. It's not uncommon and it's, uh, it's always a possibility. We had a, there was a recent fire in Massachusetts a little while ago where um, the firefighters were performing a rescue with a ladder truck and the, the, the occupants were in such a hurry to get out, they jumped from the window onto the ladder truck and almost knocked the firefighter and the, uh, the victim to the ground. And they were, they were way higher than 12 feet. I think they were a third or fourth floor window. Um, also, while the firefighter was wrestling to maintain control of himself and the victim, somebody else was in the window and they were also attempting to climb out onto the ladder. Um, this is just, it's a very dangerous situation for, for the people being rescued and the firefighter doing the rescue. This is a picture which is a, a pretty good re representation of what we would be looking to purchase. Um, side by side, there's really no comparison for safety or work platform. Uh, the basket on the end can hold multiple firefighters, a firefighter with other victims, tools. Uh, it's a much more versatile piece. Technology's come a long way. Yeah, this is, this is a 102 foot uh, truck versus a 75 foot truck. Um, it is a steel ladder so it can withstand heavy winds which we frequently uh, get especially at the beach. Um, it can uh, hold a lot of weight because of its steel. The, the platform bucket itself is quite large compared to the pictures we'll show you later. Uh, Dover's is actually a smaller version of this. Um, there's doors on either side to access it. There's a, 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 plat a platform you can step on outside of the of the platform itself and the doors open in. So you literally just step on it, press the, the uh, panic button there and, and enter, the, enter the platform. 
Uh, the advantages, again, they're over a ladder are, are many. Um, this platform is designed to be used as a work platform. Um, it can carry more than one firefighter plus tools to a work area, uh, or it's a fantastic rescue device with an extended reach of uh, just over 100 feet. Um, the rescue capability for multiple victims, uh, elderly, children, you don't have to climb down a, a ladder. Uh, this will turn off to the side and it'll, direct, uh, it'll lower the basket directly to the ground. Um, also, we can, as a, again, it works as a staging platform for us. Uh, we can have our tools in there if we have to work off of the roof. Uh, we can carry hose up there. It has discharges that we can connect a hand line to. Um, so we can, we can stage from that platform at a height. Uh, if the need be, we can, we can bail out if something, if they call for everyone to get out of the building. If we see compromise in front of us, we can turn around and we can, we can bail out onto that platform. And then here's a, another comparison. This again is Dover's uh, platform, and their platform is a little smaller than the one we would be uh, attempting to purchase. It flows 1,250 gallons per minute, which is almost double, uh, which is actually more than double what uh, our current ladder can flow. So it, it's, its protection capabilities are much more, not to mention its rescue capabilities are much more. Um, <clears throat> you can actually, quote unquote, drive this platform truck to a window whether it's a, a two-story multifamily home or single-family home or a four-story apartment building, and you can make entry through that window with a hose line. Hose lines can actually attach to the bucket, um, and you can make entry through the bucket, through the window, um, and reach fire seats much faster than if you were just you know, crawling through the whole house trying to find the fire. Um, it has its own large air-equipped tanks that you can hook to to breathe air on it. Um, multiple people at once, that, that situation I mentioned in Massachusetts, uh, it'd be no problem to take two or three people out of a window onto this at the same time. And then, uh, as was said before, you just drive the platform to the ground and drop people off. There's no climbing up and down ladders. Uh, the following three slides are uh, the platform from a height, the same three-story window. Um, which would you rather see, the ladder or this? Our, again, the basket that we've been looking at on the newer vehicle is actually, uh, it's bigger than this one. It's a little bit wider. Uh, the, each front corner is at a 45 degree angle with doors in each, so it's actually safer to climb out onto. Um, it's, it's a much bigger advantage all around as a work platform or a rescue vehicle. Um, there are many reasons to purchase a tower ladder, which is also called an aerial platform. Uh, obviously, the number one on that list is safety. Uh, I refer again to the garden-style apartments, as, uh, as we call them anyway. Uh, there are approximately 2,500 residents who live in these apartments around town, and that does not count condos or, hot condos or hotels. Um, the platform, it's a much stable work area uh, for, for us to work from, for, to rescue from. We can extend hand lines. Um, we can evacuate from a hazard area much more quickly. There are also, you know, some, you can invent multiple rescue uh, scenarios um, for hours talking about it. One comes to mind, a uh, simple water rescue uh, at Eastman's Docks. If somebody is in the water and hanging onto a boat, uh, most of those boats are relatively close to shore. Um, and if they're within 102 feet, you can actually reach them with this platform and, and literally pluck them right out of the water. Again, we've, we've gone over these. I mentioned the breathing air part to the platform um, for victims and firefighters. Um, Uh, all this this slide we've, we've said before but uh, again it's a it's a great work platform uh, it's got uh, discharges on the front so we can we can take hose hand lines directly off the front um, and it also on the bottom there's uh, there's a, a couple different safety features on the bottom of this um, it does have uh, a nozzle on the bottom which will provide pretty much a water curtain underneath if for some reason the heat gets towards us if we're in a um, rescue situation and we want to we want to hang out a little bit longer to try to to get someone in that basket this basket has a water curtain underneath it can so it can protect uh, itself as well as us from the heat 
but also there is a, a sensor on the bottom. Every time you put an aerial device up in the air, you have to look at what's around you for power lines. Um, and this basket actually has a sensor, so if we uh, start lowering this thing down unknowingly near a power line, and, and this will sense if there's a, you know, a charged electrical line nearby and it'll stop us or it'll tell us what's going on. So um, safety is a big factor for this. Uh, purchasing and cost the town. Uh, the town of Seabrook is going to enter into a five-year lease-to-own agreement uh, with the manufacturer. This obviously alleviates the taxpayers from paying the large lump sum and splits it over five years. The amount that the fire department is requesting is $1.25 million. It does sound like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money. Um, the, that is going to be split into five payments of $250,000, uh, with the first $250,000 being appropriated this year. Uh, the Warren article states this. It states the total cost in the beginning of the warrant, and then it references the first of the five payments. So the total cost is 1.25, not 1.25 plus 250. Uh, so um, that's in, in, that's hoping that's hopefully what we're going to try to do. Um, now, also, I, I mentioned that we did uh, form a, a truck committee. We've we've been all around. We to a number of different departments. We've done a homework. We've been to Concord. We saw two older trucks uh, side by side, and and uh, we got to hear from the operators of each as to uh, the good and the bad of each. Um, we've been to Rochester. We've been to West Newbury. We've been down to their plant to see, uh, to one manufacturer's plant to see what was out there. Um, we kind of tried to get the best of both worlds and, and put together a vehicle that will serve us well into the future. Uh, our truck again is it's 22 years old it does need replacement um, just to purchase another ladder versus this aerial it'll cost roughly two hundred thousand dollars more but the advantages are many uh, for the lifetime of this vehicle uh, it's well worth the added cost and that that cost that price um, may not be fully reached we may be able to get the truck a little bit less and it also comes fully equipped there is no used equipment on the truck we won't be transferring used and broken equipment from the old truck to the new truck. Um, this, this will come turnkey. It arrives at the station fully equipped, ready to operate as a functioning area platform truck. The tax impact for this vehicle uh, was determined to be $0.094 per thousand. So there's a couple of examples of what this means to you, the taxpayer, um, per year for the five years for the cost of this truck. And obviously, as you can see, for a $250,000 home, you're looking at $23.50 a year <clears throat> to cover the cost of this vehicle for five years. And it, you can figure out what yours is if you know the value of your home just by multiplying uh, by the .094. Uh, the Insurance Services Office, ISO, is a rating that most insurance companies use to determine what your homeowner's insurance will be. Uh, not all insurance companies use this. Uh, you'd have to check with your, your insurance company to see if they do, but most of them do. Uh, the ones that do um, base their, their increases or decreases on a 5 to 15 percent per step. So the, what I mean by per step is there are 10, sec, 10 steps of the ISO rating, one being the best, 10 being the worst. Our last rating was done in 2007, and it was a four. Um, since 2007, there's been over one million square feet of new commercial space built into town, and also the ladder truck has gone over its life expectancy according to ISO. So they, the, they are in the process right now of doing another evaluation. So they are actually taking into effect the one million square feet of new commercial space during this new evaluation and they are no longer counting our ladder truck uh, as functional. So the rating is going to go down. <clears throat> uh, we don't know how far yet. It could be one step, it could be two, it could be one and a half, we don't know. Uh, but the rating is gonna go down, which translates into um, residents' homeowner insurance rates are going to go up. That's, that's going to happen. The new platform truck, um, will actually bring the ISO rating back to the four and maybe even higher um, because it, its capability is more than enough for the box stores, the million square feet of, um, of new space in town. So by doing that, if you were to look at some numbers here, 
the average New Hampshire homeowner's insurance is $680. So that's just if the average increase in ISO per step is 10%, which was 5 to 15, and the average homeowner's insurance rate is 60, $680, that means the average increase or decrease in homeowner insurance is going to be $68 a year. So if we go from 4 to 5, every resident will be paying, on average, $68 more a year for their homeowner's insurance. The cost of this truck is about $30 a year on average. So if this truck brings us back to a four, it actually saves the, the residents an average of, six, of 30 some odd dollars per year. Now this is not guaranteed, this is just playing with some numbers on average, but what we're trying to say is that it is possible that when we purchase this truck, due to the size of the town, the growth of the town, and the, the age of our old ladder truck, that residents may actually save money on their homeowner's insurance from the purchase of this vehicle. Uh, the next three slides really present a uh, hypothetical, uh, God forbid, a hypothetical scenario at one of the largest apartment complexes in town. So um, imagine if you wake up in the uh, early morning to the fire alarms and you stick your head out in the hallway and it's, it's charged full of, uh, full of heavy smoke. You shut the door, you go to a, a, uh, a bedroom window, and uh, you open it and you wave your hand in which to obviously get the heck out of there. Um, if you recall the pictures before, uh, which would you rather see? You see the tip of a ladder, um, you know, sticking up to your window, or would you rather see that platform? Uh, again, you got to climb out. There's going to be a firefighter right on the tip there to help you, but one person at a time, climbing out on that rung, holding on to the rungs. Little kids or elderly climbing down that ladder, um, and then once you get down, then the firefighter can climb back up and start on number two. Uh, depending on how far out you are, that ladder is, you know, it can seem awfully long. Um, there are better ways to do it. With the platform, uh, you, you raise up, you're going to see a much bigger surface area in which to climb out onto. Uh, picture yourself with one firefighter there and yourself and maybe two, maybe three other people with you, and then you swing away, you drop right down to the ground, you climb out on the ground to safety. So in conclusion, uh, the time has come for the town of Seabrook to purchase a, uh, a new platform truck to replace our old ladder truck. Uh, many years now, we've needed to address the deficiencies of our current truck, um, whether it be size, age, and repairs, um, what have you. The new platform truck will be a great benefit to every resident in town, um, helping us to better protect life and property. This truck will allow our firefighters to keep pace with the safety technology and improve rescue capabilities that are being developed. Um, and as we had stated before, and we want to make sure that everybody knows, our number one goal is to protect the citizens of Seabrook and to ensure the safety of our firefighters. So we're asking for your support this March. Uh, as we've shown, we've done our homework. Uh, the advantages are many. And this truck will be in service for our community for the next 20 years or so. So um, we appreciate your support. Thank, Thank you. you very much.